stop pressing record now. There you go. And um, please do let us know online or in person if um, you do need uh, British Sign Language interpretation. Um, and let your online hosts know. If not, Irina will be supporting the session regardless. There are just a few more guidelines. Listen to each other, be respectful. You don't have to agree. Um, please share what comes to mind and finally enjoy being part of shaping your community neighborhood. Okay, so what is People Power Places? A lot of information up there, but People Power Places or previously community assemblies um, give Newham residents a chance to make positive change together in their local area. So we are one of the largest participatory budgeting programmes in the country um, and Newham has eight community neighbourhoods, uh, Beckton World Ox, which is one of them, and um, each neighbourhood has been allocated £200,000 funding to spend on local projects done by local people over the next two years. And it's for anyone who lives, works or learns in the community neighbourhood who can take part. The money comes from community neighbourhood infrastructure, sorry, neighbourhood community infrastructure levy, um, and ENSIL is a charge on new developments to help fund strategic and neighbourhood infrastructure in Newham. So, and what are the criteria for ENSIL funded projects? These are projects that help with the development and growth of the area, projects that improve our public spaces and infrastructure, and projects that improve the health and happiness of the local community. So I'm now going to introduce Sarah Henderson um, from the Royal Docs team, who's going to um, give you a little bit of breaking news. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yes. Hi, everyone. My name's Sarah Henderson. I work for the Royal Docs team. Um, for those of you who I'm aware some of you might not know who or what the Royal Docs team is, um, essentially we're a regeneration programme. Um, based here in the Royal Docks. It's a joint initiative between the Mayor of Newham and the Mayor of London to oversee regeneration in the Royal Docks area. Um, we're a team of about 35 people um, that includes obviously the development side of things, economies, I'm joined here uh, by my colleague this evening, Matt Davies from Heads Up Economies, um, who's responsible for the inclusive economy side of things, the skills of jobs and training for local people, have very active cultural and arts program, um, a year round program, um, many of the initiatives curated with and um, for um, local people. And then my role is community engagement. Um, and really pleased to, um, be able to share with you that the Royal Docs team will be contributing £80,000 uh, to this cycle of people power places. So um, we previous, our previous uh, community fund, Create Your Docs, which some of you may have engaged in, we will be merging with um, people powered places. Um, we obviously Newham is one of our key partners and this is a really good opportunity to kind of streamline um, funding in the local area to avoid duplication and hopefully to amplify opportunities for um, community projects. So not just with the additional funding, but hopefully also with um, um, possible partnership working with some of our, our key partners. Um, I think that's all I was going to say. I'm, I'm here all evening, obviously, so if you've got any questions, you can ask me or you can ask Matt. But um, no, we're really, really happy to be partnering with you on this. I think it's um, a real opportunity to kind of amplify kind of um, opportunities. Does that mean it's 280,000 now? Yes. Yeah, sorry, and I should have said as well, so the £80,000 is for the community neighbourhoods in the Royal Docks. So that's obviously this community neighbourhood, Beckton and Royal Docks, as well as Canning Town and Custom House. So um, it'll be across those two neighbourhoods. As a matter of interest, where does the money come from? Does it come from the Mayor of London? No, it comes from the Royal Docks team. So our, our community fund is allocated from our, our team's funding. Um, so, yes, yeah, so essentially from the Mayor of London. Our programme is... Um, Part of the GLA's um, GLA program. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I'm around. If there's any more questions, or please uh, defer to Matt um, for any sort of other queries on the rural docs team. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sarah. There you go. Round of applause. Yeah. Extra funding. So we need lots more quality. Uh, project applications in our area, don't we? So, uh, so get thinking. 
Right, so back to the application, uh, back to the presentation, sorry. So just to take you through the steps. So um, step one, you decide on the local priorities. That happened at the last meeting only a few weeks ago. And um, step two is where we are now. You discuss solutions to improve your area. Step three, come up with a project proposal to receive funding. Residents can apply for up to 5,000 and local organizations or voluntary community faith sector can apply for up to 20,000. Um, step four, you vote for your favorite projects. And step five, successful projects are delivered by residents, local organizations with support from the M Council. Step six, we celebrate our achievements. Okay, so here's the cycle. A lot of you will um, be familiar with this now, but it is a new one as of this round over two years. Um, from the launch in April, which was uh, really well attended at Stratford, and I know saw quite a lot of you in the room there. Um, May, we looked at our priorities. We're here at the moment, June, July, our solutions. So it's the idea generation phase. Um, we're also in the project application phase, which closes on the 3rd of September. Then it's time to vote, then successful projects announced. And then we've got a whole year of project delivery, which um, those of you who know previous cycles is um, just such a better time scale in terms of uh, being able to deliver the projects. And um, then we've got some time for some learning and evaluation at the end, which though is important. Okay, so community neighborhood, that's our map. Beckton and Rogots community neighborhood made up of three wards. So we've got Beckton, where we are now, Royal Albert and Royal Victoria. And why are we here today? So the three main objectives today are to generate ideas, to address the local priorities chosen by residents, to test the ideas with experts in the room and online, to turn ideas into project proposals that could be funded by people powered places. And um, so these are the three activities we've referred to at the beginning, some broad ideas to address the priorities, some focused ideas that could be turned into projects, and ask the experts, can these be turned into feasible projects? So introducing councillors. Now, I was keeping an eye out, but I've not seen um, any local councillors in the room. Please do make yourself known if you are here. So um, maybe we could um, have a look online and chat to our colleagues there and find out if we have any local councillors online. I can't see anyone, Lisa, but if, if, if there's anyone online, please, can you come forward? No, not today. I don't think there is anyone, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, if we see anybody, if anybody comes a bit later or in person, then uh, we can do an introduction. Um, I couldn't tell you right now, Rob. I could you know, possibly find out later, but but here's the uh, local councillors, Beckton, we've got Councillor Asta, Councillor Rahm and Councillor Wilson, Royal Albert, Councillor Easter, now, you've just reminded me, she has another engagement, but is hoping to get here slightly late for the session, so hopefully we'll see Anne Easter. We've got Councillor McCalmont and then Royal Victoria, Councillor Adagia and Councillor Bradshaw. And Conrad Hall is our Corporate um, uh, Director of Resources, who's our um, uh, community management lead, but unfortunately he's not able to make it this evening. So usually um, Comrade's been very supportive and does um, stand up and, and um, talk us through some of the money side of things, but he's not able to make it today. Right, so now we want to introduce uh, Bex and Roll Dots Working Group. We've got some great pictures up there. We've got lots of people in the room and online. So I believe, um, Jordan, are you going to come to the front and just... Uh, say a little bit about being a new, relatively new, but we've had a couple of meetings, haven't we, under our working group. Thank you. Um, yeah, hi everybody, how you doing? Uh, so yeah, my name is Jordan. Um, yeah, new working group member. Um, um, I joined for this round of funding. Um, so far, things have been quite uh, for me, um, just to kind of see the different um, areas of the community and what the people are interested in. I think it's important for sessions like this for people to be as forthcoming with, I guess, their ideas, but also maybe some of the gripes they have about maybe the process or things they're unsure about, 
um, at the moment, we've been quite um, good at reviewing feedback and trying to think about ways that we can improve along the way. So thanks for coming. And again, just be forthcoming for with ideas and things that we can do to improve and hopefully we can um, make adjustments along the way. Thank you. Great, thanks, Jordan. Okay, we go to the next slide. Yeah. I'm trying to have a look. Yeah, we do. We, we've actually part of our working group. Uh, the meeting we had last week. Um, there's a lot of people online and in the room, and they've offered to support us co-facilitating around the different subject areas. So people have come forward even being sort of relatively new to the working group and um, suggested that they want to support and be more sort of proactive. So um, maybe I could just get the working group in person to just stand up and give us a wave. So we've got Rob and we've got Nana and who else we've got? Uh, Patience and Winnie and oh, Richard and Charlene's here and who have I missed? Daniela. Ah, Daniela and Charlotte's here. Oh, Charlotte's here as well. Daniela, yeah. And how about online? Salome's online. And Aurora's online. And Armin. Yep. Well, yeah, it's a really, really, good, really good turnout. And Guy, of course. Really good turnout. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for all your support so far. Kay. Okay. Kay's online as well. We yes, I am. Meet with like four or five people. And now we've got 20, 20 new people to get to know, which is fantastic. So thank you. Right. We've talked about these briefly, but the priorities voted by residents for Beckton Royal Docks this time are community development and participation health and well-being, and environment and public safety. So a nice broad selection. So I'm just going to rattle you through a few key facts about health and well-being in Newham and the types of projects that we could encourage people to maybe think about. So some key facts. People in Newham have poorer health outcomes than the population overall. 17 out of 20 residents are moderately to completely satisfied with their life nowadays, Newham has also worth healthy life expectancy than London and England for men and women. So that's the number of years in which people are in good health. So um, health and well-being includes, but it's not limited to, something that would improve health and social care, something that might tackle health inequalities, uh, responding to the cost of living crisis, life expectancy and ageing well, and loneliness, isolation and mental health. So some um, inspiring projects from previous cycles. We've got Mealy Social Club, which is activities for young adults over 18 with a learning disability and mental health to develop social skills and build friendships. Um, Connecting Nature, which is a support ne network for women to come and have a safe space to meet, talk and exercise. Um, Generation East London, a British sign language storytelling for children, deaf awareness training and self-defense classes for women. And then some other projects from around the world, Good Gym, um, that's happening in, in lots of green spaces, um, befriending generally, which can connect people, relieving isolation, loneliness, and the Heart Movement Bus, which is was a free accessible mobile community space for people to experience the benefits of mindfulness and compassion practice. So just some examples, um, environment and public space, some more key facts, um, air pollution in Newham is worse than anywhere else in London, Less than half of Newham residents have access to a car, uh, but the borough is a through route for commuter traffic, as we know. Newham has a relatively high median energy efficiency score at 75, so that's higher than the London Eng England average. And around nine in 10 residents use Newham's parks at least once a year. So those are some facts, but some projects might look at addressing making neighbours quieter, safer, cleaner, responding to climate emergency, improved public spaces, including parks, community gardens, and green spaces, 
and also generally cleaner environment, including reducing fly tipping and air pollution. Some um, inspiring projects again from um, previous cycles. So welcome to Channel C was in West Ham and was improving the Channel C river area with workshops, archway and green propulsion. Some signposts and trails to playgrounds to enhance the awareness of playgrounds with the uh, colourful signposts and painted trails leading to nearby businesses. And um, Planet Youth, which was in uh, Custom House and Canning Town, encouraging upcycling. And then some of the projects, orchestra in the park in Dulwich and some musical play equipment. And last but not least, community development and participation. Some uh, key facts uh, in Newham around quarter of residents agree that they can influence decisions in their local area. Three quarters of residents agree that people from different backgrounds get on well together in the local area. More than half residents have taken part in some form of informal volunteering over the past year. Around six in 10 are very or fairly satisfied with the area as a place to live. Over a third of residents identify as belonging to a group that is discriminated against in the UK and almost two in 10 experience discrimination often or all the time. So community development um, could involve a project increasing people's involvement and a sense of belonging to their local community, improving the sense of getting on well together, being more satisfied with their area, increasing participation and volunteering, and looking at culture, interfaith and intercultural dialogue. And some more uh, inspiring projects. Willow, a collaborative theatre project in Central Park. Um, the Acid Project, which was a custom house bookshop, which put on free community events. Affecting community projects who are actually represented here today. Um, community events, exercise classes, women's yoga, also youth activities. Uh, Library of Things is an inspiring project from around the world. Community fridge to reduce food waste and big lunches, which we've actually celebrated in Beckton in the past. Okay, so enough of me talking. It's over to you now on your tables and in your breakout rooms online. We've got three activities. So um, they're gonna run sort of consecutively. The first one is what ideas could help address the priority at your table or online? So please um, introduce yourselves on your table, talk to your facilitator, find who your expert is, you post it notes or your pens, your flip charts, and online you've got um, Jamboard and you can post in the chat. Please just come up with as many types of ideas, project ideas, general ideas that might address that particular local priority. So you're going to be spending, yeah, about 10 minutes on that. So, and then we're going to move on to the next activity, which is to further scope these ideas. So you've got all your ideas. So we want you to try and select three or four of them that could be funded by people power places. So they, you know, you might want to look at these particular questions to see if they are viable, whether they could be funded. So is the idea addressing one or more of the priorities? Is the idea innovative or has it been done before? Um, is this idea short term or long term? Does it have a big or small impact? Does it sound realistic? Can it be achieved with up to 20,000? or well, that could be 5,000 if it's a resident funded. Can this idea be delivered in one year? And then finally, you're gonna have 40 minutes to further hone this, um, I, these three or four ideas with your expert carousel. So that could be in pairs or it could be a, a whole table or a whole breakout room. Um, choose one idea to focus on. So um, use the expert carousel template, which is on your table or can be shared online to guide your discussion, refine your ideas, chat to the experts to get tips on how you can make your idea feasible. Um, facilities will help you find the most relevant experts. We might need people to move around if that's um, possible. And then we want you to write down your refined idea at the bottom of the template. Um, and it says there, but note, our experts don't know everything. If some of the questions can't be answered today or you don't have time to speak to an expert, 
we will be in touch to continue to support you. Um, I've just noticed Rob from the working group had his hand up. Have you got a quick question? So can it be achieved in one year? Yeah. The cycle lasts two years. It does, but the delivery will be in one year. We've just given ourselves time either side of the delivery to make sure that the full kind of, you know, sort of application and evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So it's time now. So um, we'll get on with the... Uh, Sorry, I'm good. I'm interrupted. Hold on. <laughs> I have to get my hands on the mic somehow. Um, so we've got, which is fantastic to see, we've got quite a few extra people in the room. If, Anna, do we still need people to move tables backwards? Uh, yeah. yeah. So the, if you're at the red tablecloth with Shamila, um, some library staff are just going to help you move that table back and then you're going to feel a slight backward movement from quite a few tables so that we can just enable everybody. So our next table is a table where Anna is now, where Robin is facilitating. Um, and we're just going to move that back a little bit so we can enable more people to come there. This table up here, you are... We can get three more people in, sorry, uh, environment and public space. If you want to be in environment and public space, come up this end. We we want you on this table and we can pick another three people here. Yeah. Okay. So online, we're going to let you go and make your own arrangements. And then we will look in the room to see what we can uh, shift around here. Thank you. Thank see you. you. Well. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. <laughs> Okay. Oh, brilliant. I bet you have to instruct you anymore. You're on it. Costume, but I think. Right. Could we have a little bit of feedback from one of the priority areas online, please? Um, I've got Sharon from um, our group. So we were discussing community development and participation. So Sharon would like to feedback, please. Yeah, I'm, I mean, we can. Yeah. Hi, we came up with quite a few ideas and we found in the end that um, many of them were sort of stuff that we could bring together. So it was a lot of community, acti community activities, um, things like um, teaching, cooking classes, things that would um, sort of help to um, alleviate loneliness, working together with different generations. Um, and also something about some food bank, sort of a food bank sort of thing where, where maybe bigger places, um, organisations might want to get involved like Tesco's or Asda. Um, yeah, so I think the um, group who was in did a nice little job. <laughs> Anything yeah, else, I'm not sure. Karen. No, thank you, that sounds great. Make sure those um, ideas are captured. And um, so, Kalsuma, who's yes. um, Yes, so we were from the Environment Public Spaces group. We've got Kay to give us a quick feedback. Yeah. Kay, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, can, can, so we looked at several projects and um, the one we decided on was um, a project to tackle fly tipping um, um, by continuously looking at the best way to do this, um, just looking at a strategy. So um, we've called the project Youths Against Fly Tipping because we felt um, it's important to empower, empower the youths. And that's something that we felt they, 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 they felt strongly about. They weren't happy with the way, you know, about the environment and they wanted to do something about it. So basically this project would be educating and engaging with children through, prevent, through prevent, pre presentation workshops, um, which will include, um, they will design work um, work of arts, that sort of thing, which would kind of, so the whole idea is to deter people from fly tipping. So they, and um, what we felt, why we felt this project was was a winner for us was um, in terms of funding, um, that it would, it would match the, five, the 5K budget. Um, funding will pay for materials, refreshments, artists to deliver the workshops, that sort of thing. And um, this is a good project that is achievable on the budget, as I just said previously, and um, it's it's doable within the um, the cycle that we've um, you know that we've set ourselves to do that on. Um, some is there anything I've, I've missed out there? Um, 
Sorry. No, that sounds great, Kate. Perfect. And you, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You tested yeah. it yeah. as in going through the questions. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So Jyoti's group. Is there Hi, anything about Jyoti yeah, around we have some lobby? Brilliant conversations and project ideas. I'll pass you on to Salome to feedback. Oh, thank you, Salome. Slow me your mute. Thank you. <laughs> so we had a lot of uh, emerging ideas and there was one in particular about um, having a cultural cooking session where there'll be nutritionists um, demonstrating how to use food surpluses and all that. And that was in association with a food bank. So it was a great idea. There was also one about an outdoor gym under the Connaught Bridge, which will be fantastic, welcoming youth, welcoming um, young people, the elderly, people with mental health or disabilities. So under the Connaught Bridge, the idea is to set up a gym with martial arts, self-defense classes, all for free for the local residents. Great, thanks, Salome. So some crossovers there with health and wellbeing and community development, isn't there, around nutrition, food banks, potential intergenerational, and there's some discussions in room. So thank you online. We're just gonna go um, around the room now and get a bit of feedback. So um, the first table here, step back because I'm providing feedback. So Anna, the first table we're looking at um, environment and green space, is that right? Yeah, lovely. Hi everyone, um, I'm a resident, so I'm the only resident on this table. So um, there's a lot of ideas that we went through and one of the ones that we thought might be feasible is kind of a moving market. So you have a space and you have stalls and you do it seasonally or, or depending on how often you want to do it. And residents can apply to have a stall and they can bring whatever they make to the store and then you have one particular store where you just exchange so there's no money to be you know um exchanging hands as it were somebody might have too much of something or too little of something and they can just exchange so you can have one of those so i think the only barriers is cost around licensing health and safety all of those things litter you know and all of that but we didn't get that far but it's just a thought so that's kind of as far as we got Thanks, Pretty. Yeah, we've we've had a moving market project before, um, but not around the exchange. So that's quite an interesting um, difference. So it'd be good to, to think about that a bit further. So, um, Anna, your table was also environment over there with uh, with Amelie and Blossom's going to feed back. Yeah, um, I am. Absolutely. Um, so, yes, we were considering environment and public spaces and considered lots of ideas. We have two that we've worked up, not in any great detail, but certainly kind of thinking about an idea and maybe what resources might be uh, needed to make them happen. So one is really similar to uh, what uh, the work K was feeding back. So we are thinking about trash into treasure and really focusing around the around the tip um, and whether, whether we could all go down to the tip and have workshops on recycling and repurposing, but bringing in people who know what they're doing around that kind of thing. So bringing in experts, bringing in artists, um, and just working out how we can make things from things which people might consider as waste. Um, it's a bit like that daytime telly program um, that I've seen sometimes where they make a lot of money out of, you know, bits of furniture. Um, there, anyway, and then the other project we have, um, so we know that, the, that there's loads of community gardens, amazing community gardens, lots doing food production already in Beckton and Royal Docks. Um, and we were really interested in food waste. So there's some new legislation coming in, um, which will mean that councils need to do more to uh, separate out food waste, particularly for flats, and that's quite difficult. So we're very interested in uh, whether you could trial a kind of food waste uh, collection, but also then use of uh, food surplus that was collected. So using things like composting and anaerobic digestion technology. Um, yeah, so we're interested in whether that could be trialed. Uh, we'd need some expert partners who know that kind of technology. We'd need to talk to Council's 
food, uh, waste uh, teams. Um, and it would be great to connect with the community gardens to make that happen. Um, and we were considering really the, like who might apply for that, because it probably isn't going to be us as individuals. So if there are groups out there who can help make this happen, we would really welcome it. Thanks, Blossom. Okay, so Debbie's table is looking at health and wellbeing. Charlotte, are you going to give us a little bit of feedback? Yes. Yeah, hi. I just want to, um, our idea was eat and breathe. So we were thinking of like having foraging, going around and finding food or, you know, I don't know about mushrooms and which one don't pick and which one do you do. And we wanted to incorporate everyone, some intergenerational, so the children, uh, um, um, people all ages can talk and find out. And we want to also include that exercise. So walking, talking, or a dance, something to include everyone and toilets in the park. We need toilets in the park. That's a very important thing because you eat all this food and where do you go? If you're a man, it's okay, go to a bush. If women's a bit more difficult, um, toilets in the park. I keep saying, toilets in the park. We heard you, Charlotte. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you for that. So next table was facilitated by Milena. Have we got um, volunteer to feedback, Milena? I'll do it. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have three main ones. The first was looking at pond dredging in um, Ichikuk Park and kind of thinking about what can be done to really encourage that environment's kind of biodiversity, really kind of like encompassing, well, really focusing on um, the biodiversity and the biodiversity that said that twice. Um, we also had um, a green gym, so that was building on an, a fund that happened last in the last cycle that was looking at a combination of things, so kind of ranging from litter picking, maintaining raised beds, going on community walks, and that was seen to really focus on all three of the priority areas that were in Beckton and Royal Dock, so it was looking at the environment, physical health, mental health, community engagement, really kind of developing a space that people of all ages can get together, having a variety of different ways to, you know, exercise, but also maintain the local environment and also just foster uh, relationships with people. And finally, we had a um, park revamp. So there's a park in Renfrew Close that we think could do with like a bit of a spruce. So looking at it in terms of like fixing some potholes, making the park more inspiring. And we were thinking um, with people who have worked on the previous cycles of the people power places, like the different ways that we could kind of learn and foster kind of collaboration from previous cycles and also potentially repurpose things from um, previous cycles as well. So, yeah. Great. Thanks, Milena. Thanks for that table. OK, so over to the table that uh, Aidan was facilitating, which is also health and well-being. Do we have a volunteer, Aidan, to be back? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so we had two ideas uh, that we kind of spoke through as a group. Uh, our first one was around health coaching, so almost like trainer trainer, so supporting teachers, students, and HS staff um, in terms of like upskilling. Um, so I really understand that they need support in terms of like being stretched services used locally. Uh, and then really wanted to kind of feed that into kind of like training local residents to support each other and in the local community as well, uh, which kind of feeds into a similar theme for our second idea as well, which is around money saving advice roadshow. So make sure of uh, having a physical space. So it could be somewhere like where we are today, uh, where um, someone on the table mentioned that some of the elderly are paying like way too much for things like internet, phone bills, etc. Um, so you could have some local um, people, so it could be like local accountants, could be high street banks, anyone that's expert, smaller charities, or just people that live locally with the expertise. Um, there'll be some key people we'd like to kind of, or key groups we'd like to look out for. So SMD, el elderly, um, digitally excluded, uh, and a younger generation. And the idea is really around kind of support people in their local community to be able to support each other. So we're looking for that kind of trainer trainer idea. So an accreditation as well. So once people have learned those skills within those years, they've got something accredited that again, in that same community space, they can look out for the local people, share the ideas and equally maybe go and visit people in the houses. Because you know, a lot of people are excluded or isolated and actually they need that support for people coming to them where they are as well. Um, and then again, in terms of like the tips, we felt like it could work again, using those local businesses, those local organizations, all those local people and smaller organizations that have that real community uh, links and expertise as well. Um, we thought about 
also in terms of the cost as well. Again, we know a lot of organizations with their corporate, corporate social responsibility would be looking to work with people locally as well. Um, Location-wise, again, could spread it, but in terms of where we are currently, we thought places like libraries, community hubs, um, and anywhere that has a space big enough to, to facilitate could work quite well, so it could be scaled across the borough quite nicely. Uh, and we really like the idea of that kind of intergenerational connecting people. So having some of the older generation being supported by some of the local younger people in the area, and that could then feed into the legacy where you've got those like embedded community champions, they're able to go into those local areas and support people as well. Great, thank you. Some real practical thinking and also sustainable. Excellent. So Anna, this was your table that you're facilitating and uh, community development and participation. And we're having some feedback. Do you want to stand up and give us a bit of feedback? Um, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Um, we had some really fruitful discussions on our table. Um, unfortunately, I think we might have digressed a little bit, um, <laughs> as I think everybody did. Um, but I think the overarching theme on our table was the idea of championing people um, and really pushing people to the forefront and celebrating the communities that we have. A um, couple of the ideas that we had on the table was um, from our friend here from Upress, was, which was in regards to untold stories. So it was about telling the stories of our communities and people and the come up of our people through kind of different variations of telling stories, whether that's through video, story, traditional storytelling, et cetera. Um, then we had uh, Becton Community Projects, which were talking about um, digital inclusion. So the idea of maybe um, through our youth club, um, running a project to help young people and people of all ages um, develop kind of better um, digital skills so they can access uh, initiatives and support um, that's available across the borough. Um, and then we had Silvertown Community Projects, um, which are starting newly, um, and they similarly want to kind of um, activate uh, the Silvertown area um, and bring that idea of community back into it, where the local people can celebrate one another through uh, more kind of traditional uh, kind of events uh, and community hosting. Um, so all in all, um, I think we couldn't really unpack any idea fully, um, but we did really kind of push forward on that championing people aspect. Excellent, thank you. And so it sounds like some tangible organisations and groups with some ideas, which is really exciting to hear. Okay, so Maria, your table was... Also looking at community development and participation, do we have somebody to be back? Yeah, um, hello everyone, good evening. Um, there's a lot on this table, but I'll start from where my eyes can reach. We spoke a lot about um, community inclusion, which is um, including art people, I mean, art work, uh, community sport events, uh, community <laughs> fund for streets. Could you could you put the mic a tiny bit closer so we can hear? You? Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's loud and clear, lovely. Uh, we spoke about the uh, street parties, and uh, more community events focusing on um, engagement, social inclusion forum, uh, so event, parent school group, music group, get together, youth group, inclusion inclusive sports. Inclusion for deaf children, adults, make sure, um, making sure activities are tailored and family center. In one word, I'm going to put everything in a nutshell. We arrive at a project that we can look into inclusion project for deaf families that can include um, running computer classes, digital awareness, teaching family members, BSL, arts courses, sports, cultural awareness, music, and more. So this is what we've concluded in, and we couldn't really put a final conclusion, but at least we arrived somewhere. And then this way I can put my full stop. Any contribution? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was more, I mean, I suppose we're more focusing on how to be more inclusive from a, and have a community-centered approach. Um, and as, as Grace said, we eventually got to uh, focusing on 
not just deaf children and families and teaching BSL, but being inclusive so that families mm. understand the importance of, um, yeah, Great. cultural awareness. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that feedback. Okay, so over to Robin's table, who are also looking at community development and participation. And we have some feedback. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So in our table, we um, thought about um, bringing the community together. We had two similar projects and I'll try to explain them best I can. It's similar to uh, our colleagues here as well. It's bringing the community together through events uh, throughout the year, do four or six events that would bring uh, intergenerational, that would bring all the community together regardless of the religion, regardless of age and provide a sense of belonging. This, four or six events that we thought could be uh, celebrating Christmas, celebrating Easter, uh, summer activities, Halloween, celebrating St. George, um, do also make use of other events happening in the community. And for example, the farmer's market that somebody spoke uh, at the other table, bringing also vintage market, jungle sales, any ideas that the community could have, we could incorporate them. We also talked about um, uh, the need of having a newsletter for Beckton that would allow all the residents to be aware of the events that are happening. Because at the moment we have different platforms. We have uh, WhatsApp, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram, and people advertise in different places. And we need a common place that people can refer to, to know what is going on. The other project that we talked about was a tennis table, uh, table tennis station, forgive me, table tennis sessions for, again, intergenerational that could be uh, organized here in the youth center, in St. Mark's, and also in the park. My favorite. So these are our main three projects. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And last but not least, Shamila's table, we're looking at health and well-being. Charlene, you're going to uh -huh. feedback. Hi. Yeah, apparently. Because <laughs> uh, we're going last, I'm going to be trying to be really quick, but just I think that uh, a lot of us have got the same idea in terms of bringing the community together and development, and I think it's great that we can do that. Um, so we had many, many projects, but this is the one I'm reading out to you. It's called Greenway Games Development, and games as in... Uh, games, get games, games, lots of things like workout stops, more bins, water fountains, where you can fill up your water bottle because a lot of people cycle, a lot of people walk along there, a lot of people skate along there. So this is, um, so basically Greenway games more, if that makes sense. But included with that, there'll be like an app um, and it could like walk the Greenway, QR codes along the way, they can collect points. Um, fastest timer to walk or something like that in the app or cycle along the greenway competitions do artwork benches designs competitions for local schools and colleges universities and just also making it a good incentive like i.e like random 50 pound off the next council tax bill that's just, just throwing that out there and yeah and just about lighting more benches and shelter so that's why it's called greenway games because it gains a whole new Look to life. Very catchy. Thanks, Charlene. Thank right. Okay. So, thank you, everybody, for all that effort and all that work. We've got lots of great ideas that hopefully facilitators um, in personal are going to catch. Um, so, we have gone with the feedback, but we're going to ask very briefly for um, Emmanuel from Youth SC to come to the front. And he was um, running a little bit late, so we we're going to have him earlier, but he's just going to super quick tell us a bit about his very successful project from last year. Is that okay, my manual? Thank you. No problem. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emmanuel. Uh, I'm an 18 year old resident. Uh, I live in North Woolwich and I ran a project called Youth FC last year. Um, just a quick introduction about the project. It was um, primarily football, but I do aim to focus within sports. But we ran a project for young people aged 14 to 18 
uh, to come down every week uh, for free football sessions to get more confident within sport as well as uh, opportunity within sport like coaching qualifications um, and just have a, have, a, have a little bit of a break from school and stress from exams uh, such as A-levels, GCSEs. And what it was, the main idea was kind of to get young children off the street um, instead of doing like, you know, random activity or whatever, um, they'd have more of a focus um, and development within like physical health as well as mental health by being disciplined with a sport and a, a schedule in the sense that we did weekly sessions. So it was kind of like you had to be disciplined to, to attend every week. Uh, so it kind of trained your mental as well as your physical and overall, running the, running the project was great because it gave me an understanding about how things really work in the community, um, uh, getting an understanding of like what young people really want to do with their future, where they want to go. And um, it's nice being able to help them get to where they're trying to be. And that was the main aim of the project. Thanks, Emmanuel. Yeah, big round of applause. Is that... If that doesn't inspire people, then uh, I don't know what will. So thank you for coming up and telling us about that. Right, last few slides, is that right? Yeah. And Anna, my able co-presenter, has come up to tell you a little bit about the applications being open. Yeah? There you go. Can I just back Emmanuel's project as well? Because I was his um, monitoring buddy and I was there on a wet, when windy January afternoon um, and he just started and there were 40 young people there, all really happy there. And I went back again. It was exam time, still 20 young people there. Really impressive what Emmanuel's achieved. And so project applications are now open. Woo! And we really want to stress the sooner that you get an application in, the better. We can then read over them support you to refine them to make sure that they can be as successful as possible. So really don't wait till the last minute, which will be the 3rd of September. Um, please try and get them in early. And if you go to the next slide, um, we've got several support clinics available. So these are our central ones, which are held online. The next one is this Thursday for residents on how to submit a project application. We've got others around how to cost your project and how to do a consultation. There's also some information on your tables with frequently asked questions and a catalogue of costs to help you make sure that you are budgeting as fully and properly as you can. Um, so those are the links there, we can send them around after. And if you move to the next slide, um, I'm also running um, weekly project clinics so if you've got an idea and want some more support, more help, you can book in 20 minutes with me. They are every Tuesday here at Beckton Globe, um, 4 till 6.30, and Thursdays at North Woolwich, 4 till 6.30. There's a, li a academy link or the QR codes which are on your table. Please scan them, book them in, so I know that you're coming. Um, and, it, oh, oh, and a Saturday one, which will be, I didn't write it there, um, at Beckton Globe. Um, but if none of these times work for you, just feel free to drop me an email and I will work around your schedule. Um, and my name as well. So yeah, it would be really great to see as many of you there as possible so I can support you as best as I can. Um, next slide, please. Am I continuing with you? have to. Um, I've got a feeling that Councillor Charlie McLean had another engagement. I'm wondering, Chris, if we can just check with our online colleagues, whether Councillor Charlene's been able to yeah. get along. No. No, she hasn't. <laughs> okay. So, well, I do want to just say thank you because I think Councillor Adaja is online. And Councillor Easter, do you want to stand up and give a wave? We've had Councillor Easter in the room as well. Um, so thank you. Support appreciated. Um, Really, it's just the feedback now, which is always helping us improve and um, it, it, these events and the process. So please, there'll be information on your tables. You can scan the QR code and we really want to make the most of your feedback so we can improve the process or these events. 
whatever, whatever you like. And really, it's just, that's the end of the slides, is that right? Yes, it's just for me to say thank you for coming. Um, really do listen to what Anna said. She wants to put your applications in, come to Project Clinics. And thank you so much for online. I think Anna's got one more thing to say. Yes. And firstly, thank you all so much for coming. And it's so great to hear about all the different project, idea, project ideas. Blossom has just raised a really good point that there are lots of different ideas in the room, lots of people who are already in organisations and not. And is there a way that we can do some matchmaking between project ideas? Was that your question? And I think that's a brilliant, brilliant thing. So the idea is, and I probably didn't say this at the beginning, uh, table facilitators, please take pictures of every idea that's on your table and email it to me. And the idea is that, I'm looking at Emily, she's backing me, because this is her idea, not mine, um, to make a bit of an ideas um, sign so that people can see all the different ideas that have come forward and they can say, oh, I'm really interested in that idea. And I can know who's behind, or have a bit of an idea who's behind that or who else is interested in it and do some matchmaking that way. Because I think particularly on my table, that's the only one I listened to, everyone already had a project idea, but the value of speaking was about sharing and collaborating and building strength of the ideas that's already there. So that project board can also do the same on a bit of a bigger scale and for people who aren't here already. So please, Please and thank you for asking that question. And um, hopefully we'll see that board very soon. So and yeah, really thank you everyone for coming. And thank you. And please, that we also have a resident engagement or participation survey, just in case we haven't given you enough things to complete. Um, please, if you wouldn't mind completing that with Delaire, our library staff member, before you leave. So thank you very much and look forward to seeing you further down the line. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks Bye -bye. online. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.